welcome to lecture series of biomedical instrumentation uh, lecture 2 so in this lecture we are going to study about basic anatomy and physiology of the body so before performing any operation on human body or designing any instrument related to human body we need to study the anatomy and physiology of the body so it is very re much required things that has to be done before uh, doing any operation or designing instrumentation related to human body. So, there are some problems which is caused due to uh, for which is challenges which is there in measuring a living body in acquiring parameter from the living body. So, these challenges includes first challenges in accessibility of the variable to measurement. So, it is not like uh, in industry we can deploy the instrument as per our requirements and we get the parameters like temperature, pressure and all. But in case of uh, man or living body, it is very difficult where to put the transducer and after putting the transducer whether I will be able to get the signal effectively or not. So, this is a very big challenge because human body is a very complex machine and it is very difficult to obtain the biological parameters. So, sometimes what happens giving you example of this suppose we want to take the neural some signal EG signal from the brain. So, it is very difficult to place the transducer and we do not know sometimes that where to place the transducer to get the data precisely. So, this is one of the great difficulty to access the biological parameter within the human body. And sometimes we do not decide whether to take this measurement directly or indirectly from the body. Next challenge is variability of data. So, the data which is there in the human body or biological parameter with within the human body, it is very difficult because what happens that result or data obtained or signal obtained at one instant may not remain same at every aspect of time. So, suppose I am uh, now I am sitting here and if I take some parameters like temperature or blood pressure and all. So, it may be some different and if I am doing exercise or if I am having uh, some mental tension or some ailment with the body. So, what happens these body parameters changes instantaneously. So, we cannot know we do not know how these body parameters are related to each other and it may change at any instant of time. So, right now if my blood pressure is uh, x and now suppose a telephone comes and I attended it and news is some the news is some which is not favor, favorite. So, it may happen that my blood pressure and I may fail into depression and what will happen it will lead to disturbance of bi biological parameters. So, majority of the physiological parameters are non deterministic means varies with respect of time. So, these must be represented by some statistical or probability distribution. So, we take data from human body at random data at regular interval and we apply some mathematical or statistical techniques or probability distribution techniques to obtain the result desired result. Next is lack of knowledge about interrelationship. So, human bodies as I told it is a very complex system and we do not know how different body organs are interrelated to each other. So, suppose if there is some problem with the uh, legs you are not may not walk with the legs or your leg is fracture and all or some sprain or something comes in the leg. So, it also affects the brain also you will feel headache and all. So, we do not know how this relation between this leg and brain and other body para, uh, organs are related. So, it is very difficult in such cases to obtain the data. So, physio physiological measurements with large tolerance are often accepted by the physician because of lack of this knowledge and resultant in ability to control variations. So, it is very difficult to study the interrelationship between these 
variations. Next better understanding of the physiological relationship would also permit more effective use of indirect measurement as substitute in for accessible measurement. So, we should know precisely what how different body organs are interrelated to each other so that we can obtain the results within the body in a very precise manner. Next is effect of transducer. So, transducer also if we place transducer within the human body. So, transducer also consumes some energy and it may also add some disturbance in the human body. So, transducer also creates disturbance in obtaining biological parameter from the human body. Next is artifacts. So, artifacts are also taken into consideration like we if we design an instrument for automotive or any other industrial purpose, we take consideration of electromagnetic interference or a very popular term electromagnetic compatibility test has to be passed by the instrument for making using it for any purpose. So, some same case is applied to human this biomedical instruments also. So, artifacts, so components or variable is observed while doing experiment which is not naturally present. So, sometimes when we obtain data from human body, we find that unwanted signals or unwanted component of the signal is also present inside the signal which we never wanted. So, those are called artifacts. So, to remove the artifacts, a random noise generated within the measuring instrument, it may be electrical interference, crosstalk or unwanted variations which are considered as artifacts. Energy limitation is another challenge of a man instrumentation system. First like human body, suppose we need to obtain some signal and we need to provide external stimulus. So, sometimes what happens while providing the external stimulus, it may happens the result which was desired may not be same. Okay. So, a small amount of energy is applied to the living order what we call stimulus to obtain the physiological parameter. So, while measuring the resistance for flow of electric current, a small amount of current is allowed to flow through the body and these this current may affect the tissue or blood being measured and what will happen? It may lead to change in pH of the blood or it may lead to change in uh, voltage or biopotential of the cell or tissues. Next is safety consideration. So, safety is a very important parameter and if it comes to human body then a lot has to be done in case of safety. So, we cannot uh, provide direct shock or anything to the human body because it may damage the entire cells which is present inside the body and it may lead, uh, lead to death of the person. So, methods are employed in measuring variables in living body subject may not endanger the life of a human body. So, extra care has to be taken while taking parameters from the human body and to for this we provide extra shieldings, extra uh, low temperature and all. Now, coming to basic anatomy and physiology of the body. So, our human body consists of various subsystems, one is cardiovascular system, respiratory system, biochemical system, nervous system and number of systems are present in the body, subsystems are present in the body which is responsible for working of the entire body. So, we are going to, we are not going to discuss every system, but we will discuss few system for which we generally design instrument we use in daily life. So, first one of the system is biochemical system. So, biochemical system is chemical cell of the human body and it produces energy for the human body. It also acts as messenger for communication. It provides material for body repair and growth, necessary chemical for body repair and growth and it also provides substance for uh, required which is required for functional function of the body. Another very important system which is there in the human body which 
is required to work properly is known as cardiovascular system. So, cardio means related to heart. So, if we see heart in terms of mechanical component, it is analogous to hydraulic system and it this system has got four chamber pump. This heart or this natural hydraulic system of the human body, it is used to transport oxygen, carbon dioxide and numerous chemical compound and blood cells. So, you can see this natural pump is heart. So, a human heart is analogous to pump, mechanical pump and blood, blood vessels is analog to flexible tube to supply the hydraulic fluid. fluid. In some part of the system, diameter of the arteries and are changed to control pressure. Here in natural system, we cannot put different size of pipes. So, these arteries are the size of these arteries are changed according to the requirement. Suppose, if we are doing heavy exercise or if we are uh, tensed, then what happens? These arteries are automatically expanded. So, the more and more amount of blood can flow through these arteries and supply to the organ as per the requirement. Now, heart is isolated into two stage chamber. So, first stage is to collect blood from the system and pump it into second stage and the second stage then pump these blood to the system. So, we have four chambers here. We have four chambers left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricles and inside these chambers we have different valves like mitral valve, aortic valve, tricuspid valve, pulmonary valve. So, we have four different types of valves present within the these chambers. So, now heart has got four valves, first valve is tricuspid valve and it is located between right atrium and right ventricle and the purpose of the this valve is to prevent blood flow from right ventricle to right atrium. Next one is bicuspid valve and it is present between left atrium and ventricle and the task of this valve is to prevent blood flow from left ventricle to atrium. We have another valve known as pulmonary valve. So, it is present at right ventricle. Next is aortic valve, is, it is present between left ventricle and aorta. So, this is engineering diagram or mechanical diagram of human heart. So, here we can see this, there are four chambers, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. So, this heart is two stage pump at one, one of the two stage pump in the right side the role of this side is to collect the blood from different body organs from the system and pump the oxygenated blood to the lung. Okay. On the other side, other side pump receive blood from the oxygenated lungs and pump blood to the main hydraulic system or different body parts. So, blood acts as a communication and supply network for the all the parts of the body because all the organs which is present inside the body they require some nutrients some air so these these this blood supplies necessary uh, nutrients and uh, gases to the different organs So, the blood is carried out in various parts of the body through blood vessels. So, blood vessels are nothing but you can, it is analogous to tubes or pipes present inside a hydraulic system and the role of these vessels to are to provide the blood to the different organs. So, there are three types of blood vessels, one is arteries. So, arteries are thick in nature and they carry oxygenated blood to different body components. Next is your vein. Veins are generally thin and they take deoxygenated blood from different body organs to the back to the heart. We have capillaries also, they are smallest in nature and large level of blood vessels. 
we have in human body we have 8 lakhs kilometer of capillaries. So, total length of the capillary which is there in the human body is 8 lakh kilometer. Now, we will discuss the working of heart. So, heart pumps blood through the pulmonary circulation to the lungs and through systemic circulation to the other part of the body. We have two types of circulation present within the heart, one is pulmonary circulation and another is systemic circulation. So, in pulmonary circulation, venous blood or you can say deoxygenated blood from right ventricle. So, this is heart and we have right ventricles from right ventricle through pulmonary arteries to the lungs. Okay. We have arterial or oxygenated blood blue one blood flows to left atrium through pulmonary veins. In systemic circulation blood flows from left article to left ventricle and it is pumped to the iota and its branches. So, now we will discuss how heart works. So, coming back to this diagram what happens in first case? We have two different sides of the heart one is your right artery right side and left side. So, left side collects blood from the lungs these blood is oxygenated blood and before that different body parts they after providing blood to different body parts the oxygen which is there in the blood pure blood is given to the body different body organ cells and different body all organ cells also puts carbon dioxide inside the blood. So, this carbon dioxide based or deoxygenated blood is taken to the right atrium. So, in right atrium the blood is collected from different body organs. When this right atrium is filled completely, so there is a valve known as tricuspid valve. So, after this right atrium is filled, tricuspid valve opens automatically, this is natural valve and the blood which is there in the right atrium is filled inside the right ventricle. So, after this right ventricle is filled, so another there is another valve known as bicuspid valve, this bicuspid valve opens and through bicuspid valve the blood then again goes to the lungs. So, this blood is deoxygenated blood or impure blood which is present inside the body. So, it goes to the lungs. So, lungs acts as a compressor to the human body and what happens? It takes the blood which is rich in carbon dioxide out of the body and adds oxygen to the blood. In this process the blood which is there inside the human body is purified. So, this is the purification of process of the blood. So, what happens here? This purified blood which is rich in oxygen comes back to left atrium. So, in left atrium there is a valve left atrium the blood enters okay, through pulmonary veins and what happens when this left atrium is filled completely gradually it filled it is filled completely then what happens due to pressure exceeded by this left atrium muscles this mitral valve is opened automatically. Once this mitral valve is opened automatically the blood which is present inside the left atrium is entered inside the left ventricle. So, after the blood enters inside the left ventricle it, it starts this chamber it starts filling. Once this chamber is completely filled, so what happens due to the pressure exerted this aortic valves opens automatically and the blood 
goes into the aorta once the blood is entered into aorta it goes to different it is pumped to different body parts and this is how circulation of blood takes place inside the human body apart from this we have different body human bodies uh, different uh, organs of the human body as you can see so this is the entire diagram which is there so this is a very complex diagram here you can see this is human heart we have two chambers left chamber and right chamber this is your lung so lungs it is from lungs the blood is coming oxygen is rich blood is coming here and after coming here through ventricles it is it is distributed to different organs and there is exchange of gases and after exchange of gases what happens the blood becomes carbon dioxide rich and this carbon dioxide has to be taken from the human body and again this carbon dioxide rich blood goes to uh, your heart and heart from heart it again goes to uh, lungs and after purification it again goes to lungs and this is a cycle process and this process is repeated and heart works and heart supplies blood to the human body so this is the about the complete working of the uh, human heart and nowadays with this at anatomy and uh, bio medical instrumentation techniques electronic techniques and all medical science techniques we are able to uh, design and a uh, human heart also and it this heart performs similar to the uh, natural heart and we can save lives also for op working on human heart we need to have knowledge of basic anatomy of of the human heart so the deep we go inside the anatomy of the human heart the more precise equipment we can uh, design according to the human heart so that the operation we can save different lives such one such example is automatic uh, therapies or any other heart ailment equipment which is there in the market and with the passage of time and with the development of technology we have effective techniques to do diagnostic on the heart and to design equipment like pacemakers and other defibrillators and all earlier pacemakers were uh, very bulky and it was implanted in outside the heart but now we have techniques we have uh, better lithium ion battery designing techniques and all with the help of that we can put pacemaker inside the human heart apart from this pacemaker we have uh, for talking about the defibrillators earlier defibrillators were very much bulky and they were uh, ineffective also and there were risk also but now we have uh, precise defibrillators and taking into consideration about various body parameters we can design cost effective and safe defibrillators for the human body so this is all about the anatomy of human heart and in coming lectures we will discuss about the uh, other different anatomy thank you so thank you for this lecture we will meet in next lecture